In this episode of the podcast, I'm going to link it to something that happened just over a year ago. And just over a year ago, um, I came across Numa uh, and Kathy Numich, who are in Sarajevo. Uh, and they had this pretty cool idea to open a travel agency. I talked to Kathy for a little over an hour, uh, and I'll put a link to that uh, in the show notes. And she told me what the idea was and how they looked at launching this um, travel agency. In Bosnia-Herzegovina, um, maybe Numa will uh, sort me out on this as we go through uh, this edition of the podcast, but I always thought that starting a business in Bosnia and Herzegovina was like really, really difficult. Well, whether it was or whether it wasn't, they have got now um, a really super endeavor underway, and it's formed on the concept of chafe. There'll be some uh, links as well. I spoke to Numa in depth about what chafe is. And in fact, uh, we have guests here at the moment. And the girl said, uh, I've come back for some chafe. So obviously this works and it resonates with people. So yeah, we're a year on. Uh, and today, it's a very sunny day in Sarajevo. It is a pretty miserable day uh, in the north of the country. But welcome back to the podcast, Kathy and Numa. You know, back a year ago, um, as I said, you were coming up with this idea of um, getting more people to come and see this beautiful, and I always still say it, much misunderstood heart-shaped country in Southeast Europe, in the Western Balkans. If people go back to our last podcast, they'll, they'll get the vibe from what you wanted to do then. As I say, we're a year forward. So since its inception, um, how has it been building your mindful and sustainable travel agency? What experiences have you had? Was it as you thought it was going to be easier, harder? I would say it was the roller coaster we expect, <coughs> but the good one, you know, not the scary roller coaster where you're like, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. No, more like the, oh my God, what's coming next? It's so exciting, but a little bit scary kind of roller coaster. Yeah, it was being. It has been a little bit stressful, but otherwise, like uh, nothing but rewarding. To be honest, it's really, it's really going into a good direction. What is the the response when people get in touch with you? I know that you've got a, an amazing website. You have an app. You have all these marketing tools to help you. But uh, if you're on Instagram in particular, there are so many people now uh, trying to saturate the market. But and I'll, I'm not saying this because I know you, but it happens to be a fact. When you, when you go to your site, it is it is very, very dynamic and it does entice people. I mean, that sort of work to produce an online presence that immediately gets people hooked needs an awful lot of creativity. There are two of you. And when two people work in a creative endeavor, there's always, I won't say the ego, but there's you know, a battling of ideas to who's, who's going to do what. How have you managed as a couple, as a married couple, intimately involved in a business, uh, been able to make sure that things run smoothly to produce the product that you have? I, I think um, in, in the beginning, it was a little bit of a mess until we discovered that uh, everybody should keep uh, so that we know immediately who is responsible for what. Uh, so we both come from uh, sales and marketing industry or like Kathy, maybe like even more from PR and marketing. Uh, so it, it, it began in the beginning to, uh, that we think, I ah, shouldn't have you done this and, and uh, should I have done this? So we set up clear um, responsibilities. What is somebody doing? So um, Kathy is definitely responsible for all the great things that you said, like the website and Instagram. Uh, the important thing is that I know as well uh, what to do if if Katy can't do it, but like she is for the net creative part, and obviously I am for the operational part. Everything regarding in Bosnia, since there is no language barrier, so we we set our um, responsibilities very clear, so it doesn't interfere between us because it's most it mostly happened that I thought you got, are going to do this instead of. Uh, that we are fighting about uh, what sh should we have done that. So, so it was it, that learning actually that it is like in a company, yeah. you need to do this, I, I need to do that. And then we know 
who is responsible for I think for one what? of the biggest learning was also, even though we live together and we see each other e each day, we still need to treat it like the business it is. We need to set up meetings where we talk about certain things and we stick to the meeting times and we leave the meeting with a clear to-do list for everybody. And once we started doing <laughs> that, uh, it has become much better. And we also have some free time again where we actually don't talk about the business and just do other things that we like doing. I'd like to pick up on language. Um, when, I, when I go online um, to find out and keep in touch with what you're doing, um, I invariably uh, hit German language uh, web pages, to be honest with you. Um, Kathy, you're, you're originally from German, Germany. Uh, and of course, Numa is from Bosnia and Herzegovina. And when we talked informally uh, on one of our meetings together, you know, you said you would like to get people from Germany to come down here for no other reason that, you know, the, the bucket airlines, the cheaper airlines were starting to penetrate Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, and so to bring people down. With Chafe, is Chafe predominantly targeting Germans or? Have you got a recipe that is almost a one size fits all? Uh, I would say it's predominantly targeting the countries that uh, <laughs> work to uh, live to work, not work to live. You know, like Germany it still has this culture of people working a lot and being proud of being busy. And then you have the U.S. with the hustle culture as well. So I think it's targeting these countries where we really teach the guests when they come. And we've had American guests as well now, a little bit more. And you really have to teach them, look, you're on vacation. It's okay to sit here and have another beer before we continue the tour. Or it's okay to stay over and sleep in this town for two nights because we can promise you there is enough to see to stay longer and just relax and take time to unpack your bags. So I, I would say we, we are, so we are targeting the Western Europe market and as well the North American market. Predominantly we started with the German language because uh, that was the easiest niche to, to, to target right now. We started actually with Che Prizen and Che Travel. We did it like on both languages, uh, but it's unfortunately only two of us. It was too much of a yes. work. Um, the Instagram translation works very well. So we, we kept it in German. The website is in, in both languages. We will soon as well uh, integrate the uh, Bosnian language. So it will be as well for the local people that want to to um, to experience Che. So, but the... The tours are, are constructed for the Western market. So it, it's a lot of hiking, wine, wine tours, and of a lot of these possibilities to uh, experience Chave, to take, uh, to take some moments to, to just to soak in the, the, the moment. So it's that. It is predominantly German, but it's basically because of the social medias are not allowing that we are doing it for both languages like easily yeah. so we had to choose our battle we also we started out with german but now two years in it's getting more blurry we are getting more bookings from other countries so in the long run we need to find a way that works for us to include everyone but like numa said it's just difficult because it's very time in intense when the guests arrive and, and i know it's mindfulness uh, and it's chafe, which are, you know, they go hand in glove, uh, really. But when you get people that have catapulted themselves out of uh, Memmingham Airport in southern Germany and, and they arrive, they're still in this culture of rush, rush, you know, where's the taxi? Oh, my God, why, is, why have I not got my taxi? And, you know, why is, is there traf traffic jam? This is all uh, emotions that don't jive with what you do. So how difficult is it to calm these people down in the shortest possible time to say, hey, you know, this is what chafe is, just calm down. It, do people find it an easy thing to take on board or are they slightly confused in the first day that they're with you? I think they are a little bit confused yes. when we tell them, you know, like, chill, Polarco, it's fine, don't worry. 
And when they start seeing it at, at, as well, it's not only what we tell them, but when they just look around it at, uh, at the old town in, in Sarajevo, they will see like everybody's working, but everybody's having time for a coffee. People are relaxed, relaxed and chilled. And we start explaining and, and, and telling them. And I think very quickly they realized, yeah, they... Ah, okay, we are in that kind of a country. It, I mean, it's, it's a southern country. You know, like you have that in, in, in Italy, you have that in Spain, you have that in southern France. So they're like, ah, okay, I know, I know about it. I heard about it. I've been in these kind of countries. Okay, let me, let me check out what this country has to offer. I would say, even though you have them, okay, now we have our beer. What's next? And I'm like, have another if you want. Uh, and then it gets them confused because mostly it runs in their head. Okay, do I have to pay some extra because I'm staying longer with this uh, guide or uh, is this going to charge me extra? I'm not sure. But like uh, they have this a little bit of confusion, I would say. Or Yes. Yeah. But they get a hang of it pretty quickly, I would say, too. And then especially, you know, you know, when we have guests that um, get the rental car and then they venture out on their own. Then very often they just tell us funny stories, you know, how they just ended up in a place, but it was fine. They didn't find the location they were looking for, but they found something else and they just sat down and they just enjoyed and it was just really nice. And those are the moments where like, oh, they got it. They, they know what Chief means now. You know, when you're talking about um, taking it slowly, somebody that I, I know quite well, uh, I said, what, what, what should I do today? And I said, well, what do you want to do? He said, no, no, that wasn't the question. What should I do today? And when you've got the amount of wonderful places and wonderful experiences um, that you can see, feel, touch and smell here in Bosnia and Herzegovina, it's one of the hardest things for me to do. Is it to go to an Esmo village or is it to go uh, to a town? Right. And that always causes me angst to be honest. So when you have uh, a group or an individual that comes along, how do you approach tailoring the experience to what they want? Because, you know, let's say there's 150 really cool things to do in this country and you've only got time for, for 20 of them. Do you have a, uh, a, a way of helping you or a, a, a sort of drill or a, I don't know, a flow chart to help you do that? So what we always do is we have a little questionnaire on our website where we ask the people questions already, like how long are they staying? What their approximate budget? What kind of activities do they like? And we just list different things that you can do in Bosnia. Like you can do kayaking, you can visit villages, you can do a cooking class. So we ask them a few questions already and then we set up a quick video call, 20 minutes, half an hour to get to know them even better. And there we ask some additional questions. Like if they said they want to go hiking, we ask them, well, are you a proper hiking gear going up the mountain for eight hours kind of hiker? Or are you the leisurely, let me enjoy the view and the beer kind of hiker? You know, and we just explain to them a few things again. Like most of them, they don't say they want to drink wine, but then we ask again, so do you like wine? You know, we have an amazing wine region. In Herzegovina, we have like 2,000 years of Viti culture. And then they're like, oh, hmm, yeah, we would like wine. And then after we've gathered all this information, they get their personalized travel plan. And if they feel it's not a perfect fit for them yet, we can also edit it again. You know, we can add more things or remove things. But we also suggest them to stay two nights in one place at least to have time to soak up the vibe. <laughs> And we don't like to pack the day full of activities. So what we like to do is to have one or a max of two activities per day so that they always have time to just enjoy and do whatever they want in, in the rest of the day. But we give them as well a list of uh, suggestions of museums and restaurants and stuff that they can do. Um, and as well, we give, give them a 24 hours uh, kind of uh, possibility to contact us but like most of the time uh, it, it's kind of well planned and uh, there is so much so much to do and even they could stay longer at, at certain places 
I mean, the places they, they, where they go is like from Yaitse to Mostar to Sarajevo, and as well Banja Luka. Um, there is so much to do around those places. So when they are staying two nights, it's actually short. But since it's mostly Western Europeans, they want to have a, a full yeah. schedule. So. But sometimes we are also strict with the people, you know? Sometimes they want to do things and, and we're like, no. <laughs> yeah. You could do that, but no, you're not yeah. going to do it. It's a nice idea, but it's not working. It's too much driving. It's too much in a day. We will not plan it for you like this. Yeah. We Just will enjoy plan it. it for you like this. And... We have the final word because we know the, we yeah, know as, the country. As, as experts, you know, like we should sometimes tell the people, no, 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 you stay there, trust us. And when they stay there, they're like, you're right. You were right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I great. should have enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because people just know pictures or think that they know what they want to do when they are there. But then they underestimate or overestimate the distances, the, the, the people, how much they, it takes time. So we kind of, like said, Kati said, have the final world about, uh, about something that we're pretty sure in, into. We're talking a year down the line now. You, you know, you've, 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 you're on the way. The inertia has gone um, and you're traveling now um, through what I would imagine is an amazingly exciting time in the business. In that year... Have you identified, and I'll use this word stereotypical, uh, which is most probably not the best word, but it's the word I'm going to use. Have you sort of like identified a stereotypical traveler that uses chafe? We thought about that, but the thing is we have travelers from all kind of ages and all kinds of interests, like from culture to adventure tour. <laughs> But what connects all of them is just, you know, this uh, desire for adventure. You know, they are all Curiosity. adventurous and curious travelers. Most of them have been to interesting destinations in their lives already. Like now we have an, an older couple that booked with us. They just came back from Nepal where they did like a multi-day trekking tour. And then we also have people that are more interested in luxury travel. So it's really just the curiosity and adventurous spirit that connects them all. You mentioned age there, Kathy. Um, what's the average age of your, your client so far? That's also, it varies. Like we had, we, we planned uh, trips for students that traveled through the country by bus. And we have couples in their 70s that travel with a private driver for three weeks. It's really, it's, it's yeah. a complete range of I would say we, it, it would people. be 35, but because we had people from 20 years old until 70 years old. So it, 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 it might be that we are attracting people of our age, but really from uh, vegan students till carnivores uh, professors <laughs> of 70 years. We had it all. Yes. And I think uh, the reason is that we are this personalized uh, travel agency that adjusts to everyone. So that's why they have this like questionnaire. I like wine. I like hiking. I like, uh, I don't know. Like we had people traveling um, like totally sustainable with the night train to split and then taking all public transports in, in, in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina from Livno to Mostar to Sarajevo up to Banja Luka and Bihać uh, all the time with the bus vegans uh, they were still students so like in their early 20s and uh, in in a in couple of weeks I have um, set over 70 years old Swiss couple that uh, will I will be their driver and, uh, and 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 will drive them for two weeks through Bosnia and Herzegovina. It's every to everyone. It's adjusted. Sometimes people have me as a guide for two three weeks, or sometimes we just see, see them once uh, because uh, they uh, just want to do a city tour. Then they have a uh, air, um, they, then they have a rent a car and. They continue on their own, so it's it's adjusted really to everyone. When they arrive with you, you, you I'm sure you ask them, uh, how did they find you? Right, there's it's there's a plethora of platforms these days, and the tourist market has never been an easy one. It's always been full of uh, mega competition. 
so far in, in, in the research from your clients after one year, what is one of the defining things that is, is resonating with you about how they came to find you? I, I would say, um, so, so we, they contact us like through three uh, m most, uh, so either recommendations uh, from people that know me or uh, like uh, have been here. Second of all would be uh, uh, our uh, mostly Instagram uh, presence that is quite good, I would say. And like uh, the third one is over the webpage. So we are, I would say we are a digital ma uh, agency marketing agency that does tourism uh, and that would be our three main main right. ways how people co uh, contact us so we even uh, didn't so we quit uh, trip, uh, trip advisor and viator and get your guide <clears throat> uh, because we didn't like the way how they're working um, and did it totally on a, the, the longer and and, and and more difficult path uh, and did it all over uh, our straight B two C. So like even we don't we we don't have a B two B partner. Uh, so we we have we have I'm lying like two of them, but we are not concentrated too much. So the, the, the more difficult path we take took, but now it's a really re rewarding path. Your offering it is from as you say very small, slow, chafe to go and see some exciting things as well. Can you give me? One example of each at the, I'm not saying the lower and the higher end, but, uh, you know, f from something that people have found so amazing by just chilling to things that people have found amazing by having their heart racing at 200 beats a minute. I think, well, rafting here is great. You know, that's for the adrenaline junkies. Um, another activity that people really, really love, it maybe doesn't get their heart racing in the adrenaline kind of sense, but in the, oh, I'm happy and a little bit tipsy kind of sense is the um, QV making workshop where they can make their own wine blend from three different red wines, you know, and they can try all the combinations, which one do I like most? And then they fill that in the big bottle and they cork it and they put the label with their name on it. And we had the guest who texted <laughs> us and he was like, oh, my son, my son was born and I finally opened the bottle that we made together and finally tried the wine that I made myself. Um, so that's something that they really, really like. When you're out and about looking around uh, to find new things that you can incorporate, um, what, and this is mainly for Numa, I think, what, what, what strikes you when you're walking around, whether it be Sarajevo, Mosta, or, or even out in a village in the middle of nowhere and you see something and you go, wow, that would be good. How, what's the mindset to, to walk up to somebody and say, excuse me, I see what you're doing here and I think tourists would like to see that. Is that a difficult thing to sell to local people to come on board with uh, offerings that uh, you might have in the future for your clients? Um, I wouldn't say it's it's, it's hard. So, so like everybody, I, first of all, the, the, the culture is, uh, I would say, in the whole of Bosnia and Herzegovina, extremely uh, in towards being a good host. So everybody wants to show that, and everybody wants to 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 uh, somebody else to experience that. The only, the only problem that might occur would be the language barrier. So, for example, very often people want to go to older people to see how they are living, especially in some remote villages like Lukomir or like Prokoshkoyer Lake. Um, and, of course, some old grandma that is living like farm life for the last 50 years, it's hard then to make a connection between her and some guests. So then I would be... Uh, a, a translator, where we are losing a little bit of 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 that um, sincere uh, talk. That would be the only obstacle that that I see. Um, for me to discover what would be interesting for somebody is um, is right now easy since I have lived in in so many different countries and traveled the world through my through my job and through through my passion. Uh, so so. Kinda, I, I, I uh, developed that I that would recognize something like this. So it actually was easy for me to see the benefits and the beauty. Let's say like about Sarajevo, since I am from here and, and, and I see this expertise. But uh, when when Kati came the first time uh, to Sarajevo, when we were living back then in in Cape Town, 
So, and I was showing her all of the things that I thought would be worth seeing. And I was as well struck, wait, but this is really great. And this is really cool. This is uh, what people would come from all around the world in Cape Town to see this, you know, like untouched beauty, great views. So like in Cape Town was different, like it was the ocean. It was uh, some different untouched nature and something that we have here. And the more I was like showing it to Kati, it became more obvious to me and then as well for Kati. So Kati even, it was actually Kati's idea that we should show Sarajevo or Bosnia and Herzegovina to the world. And um, I was, I would, I thought I was not that objective, you know, like, of course, it's my city, it's my country. I think it's, it's beautiful and worth showing, but. It was, you know, like uh, both of us, uh, her, like people needs to see this and uh, me as well realizing, hey, this is something very unique that we have so many different things in a, such a small area. So we both kind of developed that. One of the things that really grates on me even today, and, uh, and recently somebody said, David, you're, you're, you're looking at it in the wrong view, is the fact that the tourism industry in Bosnia and Herzegovina, I think, could do a lot more to help the country. That's my own personal opinion, especially when it comes down to these, especially when it comes down to spending uh, huge amounts of money to make an almost Hollywood style production of what the country looks like. And I think that money could be much better invested into local villages to help people do something so that they could uh, give an offering. And I was just blown away. How the heck? did you get in your first year onto German national television with a TV show that must, come on, must have helped you more than your wildest dreams? <laughs> it's the magic of digital marketing. <laughs> how, did, how, did you, how did you pull that off? No, I mean, there was a little bit of luck involved for sure as well, you know, but we just made sure that when somebody is searching for Bosnia and Herzegovina, they find us before they come here. Like that was always our idea. We want to reach the people and talk to them before they come here, because if they come here on their own, and then maybe they research a free walking tour in Sarai, well, not that free walking tours are bad, but you know, and then they go to Mostar, and that's basically everything that they can research on their own. So we said we need to set up our digital presence in a way that people find us when they start researching about their trip to Bosnia-Herzegovina. And then we talk to them and tell them what there is to see and to do before they arrive. And that is how the journalist found us because she was researching, like they had decided, oh, we're gonna do a show in Bosnia-Herzegovina. And then she started researching and she found us. And she was like, hmm, yeah, I can't find a lot of information online. Let me contact them and see if they can help us. And then um, the the TV like the TV channel they said, oh Bosnia and Herzegovina is still like a dangerous travel destination, so we cannot send our two poor reporters to go there and figure out everything on their own. Who knows what might happen? Actually, we need a travel agency to organize everything for us, and that's what we did. Yeah, and as well. That, 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 that we don't have a national tourism board. We, we thought it's, it's, it's really a pity and it's a problem, but we saw it as well as an as a opportunity. Yes, so us. we started uh, generating content and uh, knowledge-based uh, blogs about Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, and about everything, like it, it's still in process, but everything that might occur as a question we are putting out there so that uh, people will come to us and contact us as, as the experts, which we hope that we are uh, in, in, in the meanwhile. So like the, the lack of, uh, of so, so this uh, lack of infrastructure that, that we have, we saw as an opportunity actually. When those journalists arrived uh, from Germany, uh, and most journalists, especially when it's to do with radio or television, they have an editorial aim already in their mind what, you know, they've actually written a shot list before they've got there uh, be, uh, with their preconceptions. Um, how much did they have to change? How much was the original idea changed on the hoof while you were taking them around and showing them these wonderful things? What, what we really loved about this particular show, I would say, is that 
um, their only prerequisite was to meet people in every place that we visit. They said, so we cannot just shoot, you know, nice pictures of Sarajevo or nice pictures of uh, Mostar. We need to meet a person and do an activity with them so that the place becomes memorable. Which we liked. Actually. Which we liked. And we set up the activities for them, like with a diver in Mostar and with a um, with a ranger in Sutjeska National Park. And they did some dancing um, with a traditional dance group here in Sarajevo. And that was really nice because they were really open to just see what happens. So they, they didn't have a big agenda. They had places they wanted to visit. Neon, for example, they said, okay, Bosnia Herzegovina has a coastline. We have to go there. And we told them, well, but it's not very pretty. You know, Neon is not the prettiest city that we have. And they were like, oh, it doesn't matter, but we have to see it. And that was actually the only requirement that they had. And I think that's why the, the show turned out so nice. And it really did focus on the country and the people only and not on any like politics and separation that there might be if you dig a little bit deeper. And so it just became this wholesome travel piece. And I have to just to add on uh, Kati, you know, like uh, it's always and as, as well mostly concern of people from <clears throat> Bosnia and Herzegovina and some others as well that come here. Will this um, political problems that we have come on on the surface and like being seen? And, you know, like uh, people really forget that uh, one of the main uh, or like most popular uh, places to visit in the world is South Africa, Thailand, and let's just keep with these two and are like countries with really problematic uh, political scene like, there the, and backgrounds. They're like even worse than like actually in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And nobody's talking about that. And nobody goes like to South Africa and Cape Town, let's say it, or like in, in, in Bangkok and like the political situation there is really bad. Like no, they'd like go there and enjoy their great food, the great people, the great nature. And we have to keep it like that. Uh, every country has their problem. Germany has their problem. You know, like, and let's let's keep about this natural beauty, the, the, the really great hosts as people, the great food, the great the architecture that we have here, the great history that we have here. Let's let's keep focus on that and like not like be distracted that we have some political problems in which every, every country has. The greatest country in the world, the US, has really a lot of problems. So let's let's you know like let's not focus on that and and that was like as well this this show that we really liked it was all about uh, yes. great stories that we had to show and I mean, here behind the scenes we talked about politics a lot you know but for the journalist as well as for us this was an interesting conversation to have but it was not relevant for the show and they kept it that way which was which is really great last year you were smiling like you are today and um, really excited about the year that you had planned ahead. Um, and it seems to me that your first year exceeded your expectations. Um, am I right or am I wrong in that assumption? You're you, definitely yes, right. You're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here comes part two then. Without giving too much away, what are the... What are the, the, I won't say the, the detailed plans, but how do you see Chafe developing for the next 12 months? So we are doing something super exciting and super scary this year. Two super exciting and super scary things. First of all, we are hiring two new people, which is it's beyond imaginable cool. And we are hosting two group trips this year, one in Kraina, Banja Luka, yeah, it's a Bihaj. I know, yeah, it's not technically Kraina, but it's on the way. Dent part. And one in Sarajevo, Mostar, and Sutjeska National Park. So we are really excited for that because we saw, okay, there are still a lot of misconceptions. People are a little bit scared to travel through Bosnia-Herzegovina on their own. And there are also solo travelers that we can't really cater to at the moment. So yeah, those group trips are another exciting thing that's happening this year. Hopefully happening because they need to get booked, of course. 
So one is happening, definitely the second one there, the, the one by the Luca is like almost, almost happening. Yeah. Uh, we having these two, two, two new uh, workers working with us, like uh, to help us uh, even to grow more on a more sustainable way. L last year we were like overworked, uh, which is a nice thing to complain about. Uh, but now it's 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 time to uh, grow on a in, in on a healthy way. So uh, to show even more of the country what we would like to do and one of the things in that is going in that direction is actually for example this uh banya uh, this Kraina tour is to show a little bit more of uh the unseen bosnia and herzegovina so like everybody that comes here uh sees sarajevo and mostar which i think they have to see it's it's for a reason the most to visit it but as well um there is so much more to see that uh, more to develop like in each in, in, in Whatever direction you are going, there is amazing, at least nature to see. So many waterfalls, so much un untouched nature, so much uh, sports to be done. Um, so, so we would like to develop even our uh, online presence even more to take over the national board and like to show this hidden beauties that like a lot of people, even from from the local people, don't know. You know, uh, yeah. to develop that kind of tourism. Let's go to Varesh outside of Sarajevo. Let's go, you, okay, there is, you know, like there are wine farms around Banja Luka that a lot of people don't know. Um, local people. <laughs> and especially then they don't know like if they are from, from Germany or from the UK and so on. Yes. So this, this is our goal to, to grow in a sustainable way and uh, to show a little bit outside of uh, the already known parts. Like Kati said, we have people already coming back. Uh, there is a lot of to offer. For that, we need uh, touristic infrastructure that first uh, local people need to to build up, uh, or like the regional people, people coming from Serbia and Montenegro and uh, and Croatia, and then as well with that will come uh, other people that will stay here uh, for ten days, for two weeks, and explore the country with their bike, with their uh, with a canoe and. Uh, Eat, eat some great local food and so on and so on. So we have already, I think on average between seven and 10 days that our guests are uh, staying. The national average is like two point something. Um, so we are already beyond the national average. Still it's the triangle, you know, Sarajevo, Yaitz and Mostar or Sarajevo, Mostar, Trebinje and back. Uh, with some stops, you know, like either Sutjeska or sometimes to Banja Luka or sometimes to Bihać, but that's a more of an incident. So we would like that we develop more of some hidden gems as well with with the time coming. Finally, uh, and yeah, I think this is going to be a maybe a challenging one, but I've identified it for some time. You articulate it far better than me. But one of the downsides to tourism in Bosnia and Herzegovina is this lack of a national tourist board, um, an organization that joins up the varying parts of the jigsaw that is in, in most every part of life in Bosnia and Herzegovina. It's a jigsaw and it needs somebody to bring it all together. And that hasn't happened uh, in the last decade. And speaking to the few people that I'm in contact with, I do not see it happening in the very near future or the midterm um, future. And you've expressed about how frustrating it is. Um, is it possible that you'll have to take matters in your own hand and to create a quasi uh, national tourist board working with other areas and, and do something for the country that the country's official departments can't do for themselves? But it's an opportunity. It, yes, yeah. yes. I think, I think we can add be it because that would be too work intense. But now after two years doing this job, we have made great connections into every part of the country. You know, there are amazing young tour guides. There are amazing uh, travel agencies and tour operators out there. So now we are actually, we, we made our own jigsaw. We are now connected with every part of the country and we have local people that can help us there, which is amazing for the travelers because now we can just send them to Yaitz and we can just send them to Sutjeska National Park and we know our partners will take care of them there perfectly and know the place much better than we could ever 
know it. And well, and we will just continue educating people on our social platforms and on our website and, and take the take over the that that part of the job of the tourism board and tell them what there is to see and what there is to do and that it's safe and just show them the variety of activities and places. In a, in a nutshell, it doesn't hold us back. It no. holds the country and as well the destination back. It doesn't make sense to to go to any tour like a, a fair or like a conference and to promote Yahorina and not to promote Bielash, and to promote Sarajevo and not to promote Sutjeska because this is all a, like a micro location. Take it from whichever side you want, like from the federal or from the uh, Republika Srpska. It's just like it's it's not in the favor of the of the smaller community because it doesn't make sense to make it. Uh, separated, but for in the end, like we team up with the other agency and then create our own tours. Uh, we do. Uh, we need to collaborate, which is beautiful. Which is uh, you see that that is very possible. That we work really great together. Yes. It's just like you're not in the favor actually to both of the enti entities to to go on a conference and do it separately, yeah. which is now at least happening. I, a big shout out to USA that is like getting it together. For example, now on ITB, I think they're all together under one umbrella, but it should be like in, in the future. So yeah. this is in the end opportunity for us uh, to be more visible. We all, yeah, like Numa said, we all just grow slower, but there are a lot of young and ambitious and passionate people out there working in tourism and happy to work together and collaborate. So we just have to do it ourselves. Finally then, before I let you go, um, you're both marketing professionals, so this is an absolute easy thing. Where the people, where would you rather, I'll start that again, where would you like people that are interesting interested in visit in Bosnia Herzegovina and would like uh, to be shown around by you out of all the platforms that you've got, all the places that you are, what is your preferred platform for people to find out about you and to engage with you? For me personally, I would say the website. Well, well like, yeah, it's a web website and an addition with Instagram, since you have, you know, like uh, different parts, highlights where you could find out so our goal one day is to actually make it a little bit more on, on in YouTube, YouTube so that we can explain more, you know, like website is as big as it can be. You don't, you can't overfill it. It will be too much of information with Instagram. It's the same. You, you, you can like have this like one minute real maximum, just like to grab the intention in, in uh, at, at attention of the of the viewer and uh, uh, to get like some basic information, some inspiration. But you know, like on YouTube, it would be okay. This is a national dish. This is how you order. This is what you could see. This is a little bit. It could be a little bit more explanation. But for now, I think uh, the website and yeah. Instagram is the best thing to find out a little bit more uh, about the country, about what we are offering as well on Kati's Instagram, which is, she's great doing like world-class thing, I would say. And, um, yeah. So like, if you, if you, if you go down the rabbit hole, you will find out quite a lot about the country, about us, about everything that you need to, to, to know. Guys, thank you very much indeed. I can't wait, uh, till, um, either I get down to you or you get up to us. We always say it's going to happen, but there's a myriad of things that, co that comes in the way. But next time you come here, we're going to sit down. We're going to do like, have some rack here. We're going to do, we're going to do like a, a masterclass in chief. And uh, Tamara's uh, father has already said to me the other day, when are they coming up? Cause I'm going to do cottage for them. So he's going to cook it out in the garden. So that'll be nice. Thanks for the time today. All the very, very best. And, it would be cool uh, maybe in six months' time, although you're going to be up to your armpits in work, just to catch you for 10 minutes to find out how things are going. Thanks a lot for being on the podcast in this episode. Thank you, David. Thank you. And hello to Tamara. Yes, say hi to Tam and we'll see you soon. <laughs>